Okay, we're rolling. All right, welcome everybody to a new episode of Face the Truth. Um, I'm very excited to have this guest on my podcast. Uh, he's an awesome artist. Um, I got to meet him briefly uh, in, a, what was that called? Memphis. Memphis, the Elvis kingdom on planet Earth. What's left of it anyways. Uh, very sad place. Anyways, um, uh, this guy is awesome. I had a great time hanging out with him. i um, really excited to talk to him about his work and everything else. So everyone, please welcome Mr. Daniel Schlitz. So how's it going, man? Hi, Jason. No, it's fine. <laughs> How so are think, you? <laughs> great. You know what? I think right away we need to, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, you know, uh, yeah. everyone's been talking about it. Of course, what I'm talking about is the corporate, um, you know, f- you know, companies and everything in the world right now just bashing down on the youth and pressuring them into – uh, using less toilet paper <laughs> and <laughs> more showers or something. I don't know. I'm confused. I use the shows. <laughs> yeah. How you been, man? <laughs> fine. I'm fine. You know, for for us uh, artists, um, it isn't that much of a difference. We we, yes. we used to uh, work alone at home. Yeah. So yes, I'm. I stay yeah, at home. Yes. That's that's how I feel. Like I I I I, I mean. For some, for people that go out every single day, I'm sure it's got to be crazy. But I'm pretty much just here all the time, anyways. Um, and I usually only leave when I need to go to the grocery store, so it's pretty much the same thing right now. But but I have noticed, um, you know, in Chicago, it, it's it's starting to get a little weird here. Yeah, I mean, really? as far as like, well, just like people buying guns. I I saw pictures. Oh, not the in Germans Chicago. buy toilet paper. The Americans <laughs> buy guns. Yeah, not not in Chicago. That, okay. that you're, that's probably like small town places or something like that. Um, I've I've been considering buying a metal baseball bat though, just in case. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, because who knows in Chicago what like, people start. You know, I'm gonna that, that house looks nice. Let's see what's in there. Um, no, but I mean, like grocery stores are pretty much open everywhere. But it's some Maybe. of them. Are, some of them are creepy. You go in, it's like, oh my gosh, everything is gone. Um, but it's it's not been terrible but you know restaurants are closed mm. most stores are closed so i really feel bad for like all the you know the people that are not able to work right now and it's it's that's that's what's kind of scary about this whole thing i think right now um but i mean other than that we're we're keeping you know we're trying to keep safe you know my wife's like almost seven months pregnant so trying to like not go out bad timing anything. yeah really bad yeah, timing just... jason you could have thought of that <laughs> i know i tried so we're just trying to be safe, you know. But um, how's it been over there? Like, are people like you know doing okay, or what's what's been going on in there in Germany? Yeah, it's the same. There's some kind of uh, how do you call it curfew? Right oh, now, so people it isn't uh, an official curfew. The people are allowed to go outside, but they should. There are these hashtags stay at home, and so most yeah. of the people try to, or at least just go for a walk and don't talk to anyone and, and keep the the two meters distance. Mm-hmm. But there are always, um, there's an um, ice cream shop around the corner. And when I stand on the balcony, I can, I can see people sitting around and having a ice cream. I think is it so so important for you? Can't you just? Yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, they're supporting their ice cream uh, um, dealer. So yeah. Well, see, here's yeah, that's the thing. No here is I heard like last night we ordered some dinner, and I was like, "Can we order someplace?" And my wife's like, "It's like, oh yeah, like restaurants are being encouraged to still to, to deliver food, but no one can go in the restaurant." Um, and that way you're still supporting restaurants and stuff. So, so we're like, okay, so we did that last night, but, um, but yeah, it's funny. I mean, people like bars are closed, restaurants are closed, clubs, music venues, like, um, just when I was like doing about two, three nights of stand up a week. Now I'm like, oh crap. So I'm just at home, you know, missing it, practicing. I am missing it already. I've been having so much fun doing it, but, um, but like I, I heard that, that the, was it the mayor? Um, or the governor of New York talking about like New Yorkers are like complaining, you know, uh, because there's 
you know, they're like, we can't go to the bars, we can't go to the restaurants. I want to go to my favorite restaurant, mm. and it's just, it's just kind of funny. It's like just for a little bit, just, just for a little bit. Yeah, you know, you yeah. can still go get some alcohol and go home and get yeah. blasted, whatever. <laughs> it's a test. But, uh, it's but, a uh, test. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully this doesn't last long. You know, it's kind of a, it's it's surreal. You know, I, I think the one thing that's crazy about it and interesting about it is that this is something we're all dealing with. I mean, I'm in Chicago, you're in Germany, and like we're dealing with the same thing. Yes, you know, half of uh, my my normal income is uh, live uh, is gig uh, caricature. So yeah. uh, all those gigs were cancelled. Yeah, how, so the, how's that going? I get, now? Yeah, shut down, complete shutdown. shut down. So okay. Yes, yes. So that's I creepy. get uh, first um, requests for like um, August and September, but no one knows if if they're going to be uh, fairs or trade exhibitions in September. No one knows. So I think that's why most companies stay a bit more um try to yeah to not uh, book it right away than the next uh yeah fair because you have to then delete everything again so i'm not sure uh, so this kind of uh, strong income of me is completely collapsed and most of yeah. my caricature colleagues uh, they really they're sweating yeah. yeah oh no for sure that's uh i mean i'm I was just talking with my agent the other day or yesterday. Hey, like, you know, what's going on? Like, are are you guys even in the office? Like, what's going on? And and uh, they let me know that everyone's going to be working, but they're working from home. And if anything comes in, we'll let you know. But it's like I'm, I'm in the same boat where I'm just like, uh, is anyone going to hire an illustrator for anything right now? I mean, part of me thinks this is the perfect time to yeah. be illustrating things. Yes. But are people going to be? going into the offices to write articles are you know what i mean um so yeah it's it's a little bit crazy right now so um i just heard that yeah. uh, in switzerland they are thinking about shutting down the uh, streaming services like netflix because uh, the the internet is so um is is close to collapsing because everyone is <laughs> is streaming uh, shows tv shows yes That's cr- imagine I- that I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. That sounds crazy because everyone's it, streaming yeah. Switzerland. Things. Yeah, but there's so much talk. You don't, don't know what you can. Believe. Yeah, that, that's see. That's the thing. Is like, you know, it's it's really funny. I've got um, I, in my family, I have people that are so far left that they're bonkers, like completely bonkers. Where I'm like, I can't even take this. I just, Jesus. And then there's people that are my that are so far right that it's like, what? you're bonkers there's like you know what i mean and so mm. I'm, I'm like hearing like like i see on facebook i'll see like part of my family saying this whole this whole thing is you know well yeah. it's nothing to worry about it's just it's just a you know it's a you know left-wing propaganda to try to freak everybody out and then the, you know the left are saying this other thing and then i'm in the middle saying well let's look at the facts here no one's ever shut down jason's um, family <laughs> balance yeah, yeah no one's ever shut down uh um, you know, trips from Europe to the United States for 30 days because of the flu yeah. or the NBA hasn't shut down or South by Southwest or, you know, all these different things that are shutting down. No one's ever shut anything like this down for the flu. So yeah. either it is some crazy overblown, over exaggerated thing, or maybe we should take this a little bit seriously and, mm-hmm. you know, and at least do the minimum, wash your ass, clean your hands, you know, stay away from people for a little bit. You can do that for a little bit. You know, people we'll watching that podcast in in a year, they might uh, think, "What are they talking about?" Ah, they're talking about that. Ah, yes, yeah. last year. Hopefully, hopefully. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I oh, gosh, sorry, I got a cord all. Over. I have to, I'm, I'm not. To be honest, I'm not too worried. Like I said, I'm the thing I'm more concerned about is the fact that, like, you know, I'm worried about things like, um. Like my dad, who doesn't seem to think this is that big of a deal, uh, he's got his own ideas about it. But yet he's got terrible like health, like lung health, like he's got issues, and so that freaks okay. me out. So, so I'm he's worried about in a high risk. Um... Yeah, he's got like on 100 disability with his okay. lungs, and he's you know so that makes me a little nervous. And then my grandma is like 87, and you know she I heard recently she had an accident, knocked out a bunch of teeth, and now she has to like. Just she's like on a liquid diet and she's lost tons of weight. I'm like, oh, geez, like this is like terrible timing, you know. So yeah, there's things like that. In Germany, that um, if you 
are in this, uh, let's say, 10% that get uh, the illness very strong and they have to get this uh, artificial um, nah, um, O2. O2. Yes. Oh, oh oxygen. 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 Yeah, so, oxygen. Okay, um, yeah. But if you're in this uh, small, very small uh, area in Germany, it doesn't cost you anything if you go to hospital and if you get the treatment for two weeks and it, it really doesn't cost you uh, a dime. So mm -hmm. in but there's a problem, too, I guess, uh, in America when you have to you, it's it should be quite expensive if you get the real Corona. treatment. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean. It, it, yeah, I'm not sure about that either, to be honest, because like I have health insurance um, and sometimes I go in and I'm like, and they're like, oh, this particular thing is not covered. Yeah. It's like, what the hell am I Sorry. paying this for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that yeah. kind of thing happens. Um, that happens a let's lot. Let's change the subject. There must be yeah. better topics. Yeah, let's talk about uh, how, how's AIDS going in Germany? Um, <laughs> 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 no, um, but uh, how have you how have you and your family been, though? You've been uh, you've been good since we last uh, hung out? Been having a, besides all this craziness. Yes, everything's fine. My, I have two little children, and my they, my uh, children, my girls, and my wife. They um, went to to their parents, so to my grandparents. Oh, cool. For four hundred uh, kilometers away, because there they have their cousins, and their my wife is teacher, so she's doing some kind of private uh, school now every morning, and they're enjoying it. They're at their grandma, and they. Oh, that's awesome. So. It's kind of holiday for them and me staying here and doing your stupid <laughs> drawing pictures yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but everything's fine. Every everyone is healthy and everyone is uh, yes. That's good. That's awesome. So uh, you've been keeping busy uh, doodling and so on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> work. <laughs> work. Yeah. That's we good. enjoy work. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Yeah, <laughs> but I, yeah, I enjoyed the time in uh, Memphis, surely. So I, I, most of the time I draw for work, and that means I don't draw or paint what I would like to draw or paint. That means when I have um, finished working, um, my interests aren't drawing or painting anymore because uh, I do that yeah. all the time. So yeah. you kind of lose a hobby when you do your hobby for a living. Yeah. And I totally enjoyed it uh, in Memphis when I could do what I like and whatever, such nice colleagues and uh, go wild and yes. And no one yeah. telling you. I, I mean, I, I, I yeah. Could you, could you do something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you change this? Uh, the chin's too long. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally relate with that. That it's, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm wanting to try to do for myself is, you know, make time for me just to do art for myself, but it's that's difficult, you know, when you're doing it for a living. Yes. But it's kind of a silly thing to complain about. If you're doing it for a living, yeah. it, you know, it I'm glad to, to do it. But um, in Germany, yeah. you say complaining on a high level. Do yeah, you, complaining. Do you have that saying? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You always um, complain, but it's really doing the thing that's yeah. fun for you every day is very nice and getting paid for it is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing I'm going to, like, I recently invested in like a, i got a gopro camera that i really like um it's got it's pretty awesome quality and so i'm going to start trying to make extra time for me to paint with oils and stuff but then film myself doing it so i can kind of turn it into you know a little bit of profit here and there a little you mm -hmm. know do some tutorials or something yeah, good idea um but that way at least i'm because i I'm, i kind of had the mentality uh, like yeah it, i I feel like I, I need to draw and paint for myself, but at the same time, I feel like I need to always be doing something that's making – making it. May, if I'm doing it, it needs to make sense. I need to make mm. money because I have yeah, yeah, like yeah. a lot of children. <laughs> Are you already on Patreon? <laughs> no. You know what? I'm To be honest, um, people have told me and suggested that I should do that, um, but I'm, I'm always just kind of like I don't know what I would do. Like, you know, like uh, – what I don't have things to give away. Then I have to like spend all this extra time creating things to give away, and and it's like I mean, if people want to pay to just watch me draw and paint, cool. But you know, I don't know. I I haven't. To be honest, I need to put some thought into that and see. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have told me I should do the podcast through that. To be honest, I haven't looked into it enough to even know much about you know that whole thing. I haven't. Maybe I'll look into it uh, since I've got a little bit extra free time right now. <laughs> yeah. But 
I, I'm not uh, very much on Patreon, and I, I'm I'm not sure about if it really works. For some, it it seemed to work. Yeah. And I I think you don't have to give anything special. You can you could just uh, give the download possibility of the high res picture in the end. Yeah. And the people go sometimes go nuts over a high res picture. Yeah. yeah, I can see it in high resolution. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I should look into it just to see whatever you know. Everything helps, and yes. and yeah, I, yeah. I, I I always appreciate support from fans and and people that you know follow you. And I mean, that's always a cool thing, you know. Mm. Um, I had a question for you about your like I I really loved just like watching your well. First of all, let's go back two years ago when the 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 caricature convention. I think it was in was it in San Diego or something like that or San Francisco. Yes, um, uh, it was San Diego. Yes, San Diego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I started seeing people posting your your step by steps. I was like, oh, who's this guy? And I started seeing it. I'm like, oh man. And right away, um, my first, um, the, my first impression was, oh, this is it's like Jack Davis type of shit. It's awesome. Like that's the first thing I, f- I was like the feeling and the look of it. And then I started seeing them. Like you're not sketching. This guy is just freehand drawing, just just bam 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 and and i was watching i wasn't at the convention so i was just seeing the posts and i remember getting to a certain point going you know i've been there before i've done the competitions all stuff and i'm like okay this this is the guy that's going to win this year (laughs) i could just tell and i was so excited to see the process and it was really really cool and then he won which was awesome and uh well deserved congrats but then this last year um we got to meet in person and it was great and it was so cool watching you again. Uh, you know, just, it was funny. It was almost like the first day or so. You didn't really do too much. You kind of, you know, kind of did, kind of did a lot of pacing. And I didn't mm-hmm. see you doing too many doodles or anything on your on on the side. You kind of just, and then all of a sudden you just kind of get up there and just started going into it. So I'm curious yeah. about that when you, because the the. You know, a lot of people, myself included, I like to uh, do a lot of pre-planning, thinking, sketching, like, you know, you know, more not as spontaneous that way, where what I was impressed with is you just go in there and just start drawing it, like straight up drawing it, no pre-sketches or anything. And what I was curious is how how did you get to that point where you decided to, I mean, obviously you feel comfortable doing doing that, which is impressive. But when did that start, that whole technique? Um, don't we all have, um, most of the time, the feeling that our sketches have the, are the most energetic? Yeah. Do you agree yeah. in that? Yes. So uh, yeah. from the first, uh, when I was a student and uh, sketching around, I always had the impression, uh, why was the finished drawing kind of um, yes, more static and stiff? Yes. So from from the beginning on, I I thought oh the there's something magic in sketching. So, and from there on, I um, I started playing ten years ago. I started playing improv theater. Mm. So and uh, something happened to me uh, there. I I started uh, playing improv theater because my uh, film. I, I studied filmmaking, directing, and screenwriting. And my professor told me. You should get better in acting, uh, in directing actors by becoming an actor. So, okay, mm-hmm. me becoming an actor, I never was interested in, in acting. And yeah. I was more the shy guy and not the um, extroverted guy. Mm-hmm. So I thought if I would go to a theater group and um, uh, say I want to join you, I, I might uh, become the role in the beginning of you can play the tree. Yeah, we, we need someone playing the tree. Do you feel the wind? So, and I, I didn't want to do that. And then there was kind the of a really um, luck thing. Uh, there was an improv group around the corner. Uh, and they, in the end of their show, and I was uh, pissing myself uh, laughing. It was so funny. It was so funny. And they told, uh, <laughs> in the end, they said, we are looking for new members. Mm. And I thought, maybe I could do that. You could uh, step into or, or jump into every role and every character you like. So I started playing improv theater out of becoming a better director. Mm. But something happened there. Uh, you start to um, to enjoy failing. You know what I mean? So you being say, in the moment. You say failing or failing? Failing. Oh, yes. failing. No, failing. In, yeah. yeah. 
you know, in, in fail and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should uh, definitely be uh, as best as you can. So you, it's the same uh, with the sketching. Yeah. So um, be in the moment, be concentrated. And if you fail, learn from it, enjoy it, stand, uh, stand with a stroke you made and try to, to do the uh, next stroke better. And yeah. then uh, two or three years ago, I saw, uh, I, I discovered Kim Jong-gi, you know, the famous Kim Jong-gi. Mm. That's the guy that does the comics, right? Those crazy huge comics. Yes. And he yeah. does the without pre-sketching thing. He's the master of drawing without pre-sketching. So, yeah, and he's when amazing. I saw this, I, I was thinking, I want to do just that. He does it the right way. He, he's in the moment. He's concentrating. He's doing improv drawing. Yeah, he's an, so, he's insane. Yeah. Yes, it's to totally insane. And his uh, kind of ability to draw something in every perspective and a car from yeah. underneath and, Dude, uh, and animals irri from... Irritating. <laughs> so, but I, I, that magic. was the first oh. time when I, I was thinking, uh, I want to do that. But I wouldn't do that at home. So why not in in this caricature convention, if it, if it doesn't work out... I can throw it away, so but just try it, and it was so much fun for me. And I tried to improve, and I tried tried to to enjoy being being in in this very moment. So that's what well, I do. You see, all this is very nice uh, and makes sense what you're saying. But what you're not sketching when you do this. This is uh, I want people to understand that don't know this is Daniel does not sketch. He's got this long strip of paper that's like uh, seven to eight feet maybe. Maybe it's six and a half. I don't know how tall the thing was, but um, he doesn't pre-sketch anything. He goes in with a marker or a pen, and he just that's the, that's the, that's the thing that impresses me about it. Is for one, I got to commend you for your caricature skills. Um, you're you're because because you, you you're already you got to see it all in your mind already. The proportions, the the weight, the feel, uh, the essence of that person. And because, you know, a lot of times, like, I like to explore and try to push shapes a little bit more. And I've done spontaneous drawings, and I t completely know what you're talking about. There is a freedom there. There's an, there's an excitement, and there's a lot of life to that. And that, that's great. I love doing that. Um, but what's – I mean, you've got a really awesome cartooning skills where you're just, like, in there. You know, you've got a – you know, aus you know obviously, you've got a, an aesthetic and a style of your own. Um, you're doing, like, the shade markers, and, you know, you're really good, you know – the nice th thin and thick lines and everything with the, the comic style. But your caricaturing is like pretty much spot on. I know there's a couple of people you were just like, oh, I could have been better. And, you know, and then of course, that's going to happen when you're doing it the way you're doing it. Yeah. But for the most part, um, and, and by the way, if you can send me, um, if you've got some good screenshots of that, I have pictures on my phone I could use if, if you don't have them. But, um, I want to show some people what I'm talking about when we talk about this. But, but anyways, um, that's you know, Jason, what I'm impressed the, the with. The difference is that in your uh, job, doing your um, masterpieces, it's all about the, the final result, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that's why you – and if you sketch and sketch and sketch and try to push it and, and do the best you can with a face, you have definitely the best result. Mm -hmm. So that's your approach. And if That's you, true. no one would, no one would give you some extra money if you told the people, oh, this Times Magazine cover <laughs> is without the pre-sketch. You I'm write it gonna... down without the pre-sketch. No one would care about it. So, yeah. it's but the it, the result counts. But when I do um, live caricatures at gigs, yeah. it it isn't that much about the result, in my opinion. It's about the performance. I sit there. I'm booked for four hours. Mm. And I'm supposed to draw, let's say, 50 caricatures in these four hours or 50, 60. And what counts is not the single drawing, but the performance. Mm. Me being happy, shaking hands, not looking uh, like shy or uh, I don't look over my shoulder, but being kind of... Um, the whole package, the whole deal. Yeah, whole package, yes. And trying to, to increase the level of quality as as high as it can, but quantity is even much, even more important than quality. So in this balance of trying to be happy, trying to be a, a nice guy, trying to to reach your quantity, it, you kind of get better and better and better in in this uh, in 
let's count every stroke. So let's um, make how do you say? Let's make the stroke count. I don't I don't want to lose time with erasing. Yeah. And you you really learn from your faults. You but you only learn when you do them. So if I do a and I decide, you see the face. I think the nose this way, this shape. And then you uh, I go on with the the eyes, and sometimes I see fuck. It's the yeah. wrong nose. And then I you just go it with just it. Moved. I I decide I made the wrong decision. I tried to, and in my in my brain there's a huge fuck. <laughs> but I try to smile more and like, be like, it's very, "It's very good, yeah." Okay, and and but but then I concentrate even more with that face and try to make the rest fit even more. You know, be more concentrated with the mouth. And if you you you, you know what you can do with a with a with a face, you can do anything. If you if you see what uh, Manny does with Christopher Walken, or or you would do with Christopher Walken, and anyone else, you can. Scratch here or there, so there is no wrong nose. There's just a wrong nose in my brain. So that's why I try to get more and more and more and more comfortable with this um, drawing without pre sketch. So that's awesome. That's really cool. No, I mean, I, that's really cool. I really, uh, I respect your your approach and your technique. I think it's awesome, man. It was so cool just watching that. Um, when did you? So you went to school for directing. Uh, that was that, that was like the main thing. When did you get into cartooning and caricaturing? Were you doing that the whole time? I was always drawing as a kid. I was always into drawing, into uh, comics, and um, people asking me, "Could you for this Christmas card or uh, gift card? Could you draw a caricature of those ones?" So I, I kind of always did some caricatures, and then I when I started uh, studying film, I was the one drawing the storyboards. Mm. For the other guys, because I was into the film uh, techniques, and I was the one who was able to draw quick, quick, yeah. quick. Um, yes, and then there was a just a friend who told me, "I want to want you to draw the for a wedding as gifts, draw everyone." And I said, "Really?" And yeah, I give <laughs> you uh, two hundred uh, euro. What? Two hundred on one evening? You sure? And he yeah. said, "Yes, it's a present." So it was for me the whole pressure was yeah. some kind of okay. If they don't like it, let's see. And on this very first uh, gig I had, I mm -hmm. it was very interesting because drawings I really liked on that evening. The people said, "Ah, is this really me? Ah, do I look like that? Is this my <laughs> nose?" Yeah. And then when I in when I had the the fuck sign in my brain again. Sh ah, People behind me said, oh, it's just his uh, look. Oh, it's totally. So yeah. the people, there are people that they can't see it. Most of the yeah. people can't see. So I'm, there's another saying. I'm not sure if you have this saying in, in, in English. Uh, I as the, um, one with, uh, the one with one eye, I'm the king of the blinds. Mm. So I wasn't a good caricature <clears throat> artist at that time. But. They were all blind, so I they enjoyed what I was doing, and they were saying, "Wow, he's doing so." And that was uh, the first gig, and I had the impression, no one cares. You can just yeah. do the best what you can, and you will get better. And there, there are some friends who still have those uh, pictures from their first gig, and I'm always like, "Oh, put that away, yeah. put that away." It's so ugly, <laughs> so That's ugly. Funny. I mean, you know, it's funny. Is like, of course doing caricature commissions or caricature illustrations or whatever, there's always going to be those people that are like, you know, oh yeah, that, that doesn't look quite right. Can you fix this or whatever, you know, like art directors or whatever, like, you know, especially like right now I've experienced, you know, had having really awesome opportunities to do big covers where I get to use caricature, but there, there's so much control because they're so afraid of things, but you know, it doesn't stop there. Like a lot of, like realistic portraits that I have to paint. Um, I will draw it out. It is 100% accurate. Um, it's 100% the person and they approve the sketch, but they're like, Oh, it looks, you know, you know, they'll say like, Oh, you know, I don't know. It looks a little old. And, I, and I'm usually like, well, this is just the pencil drawing line. Sometimes in the sketch phase can look a little harsher. When I start painting it, it'll come together. Just trust me. You've seen my work. That's why you hired me. It's going to be a good painting. Just let me do my thing. And then I'll send like the painting and they'll be like, 
Mm, you know, his nose looks a little too long. The jawline, could you could you get rid of that flab and just make it real straight jawline? All so even with realistic portraits, you're, con- you're you have to alter it to their fake reality. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. and it's like no, this is a one hundred percent the person. Yeah, you but, you showed know. me the your painting of that uh, Mark Ruffalo. Oh, and yeah. it was so spot on that you couldn't. Uh, but you know that that is the the problem in many areas in the filmmaking area too. If is there a movie? Uh, tell me a, a movie you don't like. Anyone? Any any movie? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Let's the, say the, the new Harry Potter movies, whatever those are called, with the un with okay. beasts. I Fantastic know, like, beasts. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Good example. So, yeah. and you are an artist, and I think you are clever, and you are. There's uh, much um, going on in your brain, but could you really tell why this movie sucks? You couldn't, I guess. You you had some ideas. Maybe you yeah. would say uh, that was a bad uh, casting choice. Maybe this was unrealistic, but you couldn't really tell because you you are not uh, a screenwriter, yeah. and you you can't even say who made the mistakes. Was it the screenwriter? Was it the director? Was it maybe the actor? So people just um, all comes together. Feel they're, they're, they're something they don't like, and then then the mess starts. They're giving you advice. <laughs> so there's some guy saying, ah, there's some I sh- what I should have said was, and then I should have said the Star Wars prequels. That's what I should have said because, because then, because, because you can pinpoint exactly what's wrong with those yeah. <laughs> very easily. Um, no, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Um, did you like the Fantastic Beast movies? I was bored. That was my, no, I was so no. bored. They are. There's Ugh. so much imagination in it, so I like that, and yeah. I like the, the main actor, and he's doing a great job, and I like all the atmosphere, yeah. and and it's the the world they built is. But it's like, oh, but the story exactly, like, yeah, I know, yeah, um, yeah, that that's dude. But story why? is everything, man. So if story. you go, if you, if you come into the the screenwriting, uh, it's so hard to find mistakes within within a, a script. So, no, nah, yeah. But, Let's let's not talk about. No, that's that. true. Uh, have you seen? Uh, by the way, uh, have you seen uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? What do you think about that? Did you see that one? The new Tarantino. Yes, yes I did see it. Um, for me, it's just a joke. It is like uh, if someone told in in a bar, imagine some kind of uh, Brad Pitt playing some kind of. Uh, how, how, what is it? Um, a stuntman? <laughs> Stunt and imagine double. those killers and imagine him go being the neighbor. So, and this is, that's, that's <laughs> the only uh, content of this movie, in my opinion. Yeah. And there is still brilliant acting in it. Brilliant mm-hmm. acting, brilliant dialogues. But for me, that there isn't a, a, a story except this joke. So, yeah. I was looking yeah. for some kind of surprises or some kind of turning points, but there was just this this one joke. So I, I really <laughs> was very well, much you know, disappointed. You know what? I actually really liked the movie, and I'll tell you okay. why. For, I love Tarantino. I love his storytelling. Um, I love his music. I love his aesthetic of, of filming. Um, the the way he captured the era – um, there was so much humor with Leo and Brad Pitt. They were, they were just excellent. Um, I like, I personally liked the slow. I liked how it had to do with the man's with Manson, but it didn't. Like that it was almost like a side thing that you mm. kept worrying about during the movie, but it, it doesn't really affect the main characters too much. And I like how there's like this slow build up, it just builds and builds and builds. And you're like, why do they show this and why do they show that? And and it's sort of like I don't know, but you're you're. It's like a slow buildup of getting to know these characters for certain reasons, like the whole part with Brad Pitt and the and the uh, Bruce Lee scene, um, and then the scene with Brad Pitt and what happened to his wife on the boat. All these dif- different things all add up to the final scene at the very end. Um, even with Leo and his failing failing as an actor and the stress and all this kind of stuff, he's got that freaking blow. Uh, what do you call flamethrower in his shack but all the things that built up to that crescendo all that storytelling the character development that was sort of like you know this is okay this is kind of a, a little bit of a long build up but when it 
for me, it all pays off at the very end when it's just psychotic and crazy. And you're like, okay, now we we understand why Brad Pitt, how he does what he does, and and the whole thing with the and the dog and all that. All, everything just came together like an opera at the end. I thought, yeah, and it was. It, but you're right. It's almost like a long setup, like in a joke, and then the very end is the punchline, and that was it. You know, yeah. and I don't know. I I. I appreciated the uh, the creativity to that, um, but I, it is. The, reason, I the reason I to, brought it up is people people are just like what you said. There's a lot of people that are divided about it, so that's yes, why I was yes, curious. Yes. But it's so beautiful done, definitely. I was just disappointed yeah. because I was looking for some kind of uh, I'm not sure some story, more <laughs> of a story. But it, it it just the atmosphere and as you said, the 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 single scenes are brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So are you? Uh, are you still involved quite a bit with film stuff? Is that is that something you're still trying to pursue? Um, yes, but on an, my wife got very ill ten years ago, mm -hmm. and that's that was when I um, finished uh, art school, and that's when I wanted to kind of ah filmmaking business. Yeah, but uh, at that point. Um, I was completely concentrated in family and uh, she's fine now and it, everything turned out fine. But all those uh, doors, they kind of opened for a, a few centimeters. They closed again for me, the film doors. Mm -hmm. And in the last uh, 10 years, I tried, uh, I tried to push and I, I wrote scripts and I have some contacts to producers and... And it was so frustrating the last 10, 10 years. Um, just... All those efforts went into nothing because if you have a, a, a written a script and there is no movie, you have nothing. No one reads scripts. Yeah. So that's why I, for me, it was so frustrating. All this effort uh, turning into um, um, dust, nothing. Yes, just into uh, how do you say uh, cupboard projects? Cupboard projects. Mm -hmm. Shelf? No, you say shelf. Shelved? Like put on the shelf? shelf. Like on yeah, the side? Shelf. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. You know what I mean. Um, yeah. But uh, then I discovered, I talked uh, with Joe Bloom about that. I discovered uh, the dictation uh, software and how easy it is to dictate uh, text. And that's why when I was thinking, I, I love uh, listening to audiobooks. Maybe all or many artists uh, oh, yeah, yeah. like audiobooks. Yeah. And I was thinking... If I listen to an audiobook for 10 hours, yes, or 12 hours, one sh could be able to dictate a novel within 12 hours. You yeah. know, so just improvising out of your brain. You could start uh, dictating and after 12 uh, hours, you could have a, a, um, a novel. So that was my <laughs> thinking. And... <laughs> I, I tried it together with a, an improv um, colleague of mine. He was ill and uh, he couldn't move his legs. And together we um, dictated a novel. It's a children's novel. And we found a, a distrib you say distribution, yes. And you can buy this book now. And I, I did uh, the illustrations for that. And wow, that was for me, awesome. it was like a, you can... Instead of uh, writing scripts that uh, never gonna be realized, you could just write novels. <laughs> you know, See, dictate the, the Hold on a films second. you have in your stop, brain. Stop! 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 First one second. <laughs> I love this so much. So you're telling me that you and a friend just did you have any idea at first, or yes, did you I just? No, no, you, I had the, like a rough outline? the outline. I had the outline, you okay. know, three pages. Okay. And I knew it was my idea and I wanted to make it like a um, children movie. Okay. And I okay. was thinking, oh, you're ill. You're, you're lying on that uh, sofa. Maybe I, I come over and, and within one weekend we had the first draft. That's crazy. That's yeah, so funny. So you, and so you guys just recorded yourself talking for that long, uh, just – Improving scenes and ideas and whatever yeah, together. It's, it's an uh, there's a good. Uh, it's called Dragon Dictate. It's a uh, the best uh, worldwide um, dictation di dictation software. Dragon, mm. and you have to um, for about one half uh, half an hour. You have to read a text, 
and the program knows the text and if and when you read it the program program learns to know your language so if you do invest that half an hour afterwards it's pretty pretty good and then we we That's started That's amazing. And it's you can close your eyes. It's if you I'm I'm not that fast in typing. And when I That's type so cool, I always man. see mistakes <laughs> mistakes mistakes. But if you if you um, approach it like a like an improv scene, you can close your eyes and see and and just uh, start it was uh, a dark night. The stars were shining on the cold blue sky. Uh, dot next uh, how do you say next? Um, next paragraph or next, sentence? Oh, yeah, ne or next whatever. paragraph. Uh, she opened her eyes and discovered she uh, she was naked. Uh, and oh, what happened? So like that. And <laughs> what happens are, next? Yes. <laughs> and when you get into the mood, you yeah. you start um, talking faster and faster and faster. And then my colleague told me, "Oh, I know, I know. Uh, let me, let me." And then we changed the. Um, microphones and then he took over and then yes it was fun and but it was well, a very badly awesome. badly written first uh, manuscript so there was another three works uh, three weeks of work to make a really yeah finished uh, tighten it up and clean it up and all that yeah. so that book's available people can get that book yes, yes. yeah you can that's, in German that's, yeah. that's awesome man that's so cool <laughs> And I'm working I on several that. new books now, so that's my filmmaking. That's really, process. that's really cool. I love too that you're doing the improv thing, um, and and seeing the connection with your art, with the directing and your drawing and and the improv. And the, the it's interesting because, um, as you know, I've been I've been doing stand up now, and and I really love it because it's been it's been doing something to me personally in my life where it's forcing me to write more, which I love to write. And it's, it's helping me to be creative in a different part of, of my, my brain. Yeah. Um, and it also helps me to become a better speaker, helps me mm -hmm. to be more confident in front of people on a daily basis. Um, when I go to the gas station or go get coffee somewhere, I can interact even like in a more fun, more interesting way with people. Um, I'm constantly noticing everything and getting ideas, just filtering through my head and yeah. writing things down. And do you and so see connections? Yes, and that's what I was about to say. Is is the yeah. stand up um, is a, is is something that I feel like has always actually been a part of me, that but I haven't tapped into that part, and you know it feels so natural, but it's also challenging. And I've noticed how the you know the stand up with my artwork, it feels like one thing. And everything helps support the other thing. Like my experiences with my art helps me become a more confident, stronger stand-up. Mm. My stand-up is helping in those ways. And it's interesting because I never would have thought of it that way. Um, and it's it's uh, it's you know it's something that I've, I've like fallen in love with. Like I, you know, it's amazing. Don't you play music too? Yeah, but I, I don't so, get I don't get to play music as much. Um, I still play. I play like guitar every, in my, every once in a while in my studio, but. Um, that's kind of a strange thing for me, to be honest, because music was so much to me at, at one point, and I was touring and I was putting out records and albums and that sort of a thing, um, and it was basically my entire life. That's all I was doing at the time. I didn't have time for anything else. It was just the bands, um, and it, it was basically my full-time thing. Um, and then my ex-wife now, but my wife at the time, she basically made me quit, uh, and once that happened... Um, I kind of shelved it, you know, and mm. and uh, it, it's it's kind of like a weird, like I, it's a love hate thing. Like I love music and I love going to see I have a lot of friends and bands, um, but I kind of feel annoyed because I can't do that. It's it's you know what I mean. It's like it's 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 really difficult right now in my life to to, to think about playing in bands and that kind of stuff. But I, no, I like I, to play for myself. I like yes, to play for uh, myself. You but know. I'm not uh, talking about playing in bands. But uh, don't you see a connection too between painting and playing music? Oh, of course, yes. Rhythm yes. or uh, contrasts and, and everything like that. And it's there. Yeah. And I think all those art forms, uh, if when you get into the different art forms, if it's filmmaking or yeah. writing or drawing or um, playing uh, music. 
you can see more and more connections. It's one oh, yeah, yeah. thing, and you can. It's all, yes, it's everything about feeling, getting a yeah. feeling for the, um, for the re recipient, for the, the one who is. Oh yeah, yeah. For your viewer, audience, kind of audience. audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What will the audience see? What will the audience feel watching my painting or or listening to my music? Or, and it's um, for me, it's very interesting that all those forms. There are so many connections, and you can get so many out of it if you yeah. take something from there to there. And yes. no, I I totally agree. I think there's there's for sure a, a connection with all that. You know, um, it's. I mean, for me, it's like one of those things where, like, like, like the music, the, the like, the writing, everything. There's, there's, there's a, um, there's a part of me that just, I don't know how I could not be doing something like that. Like, it's like it just doesn't stop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting. Just like you know, even like when I was, man, maybe like nine or so when I first started doing caricature, um, I, I remember. It was like once that thing clicked in my head, I, I couldn't turn it off. And everywhere I looked, it, it was like being in a fun house, you know, yeah. like every, everywhere you look, you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is overwhelming. And it's the same thing with with the stand up where like every single thing is a bit now, everything. Um, and I always I used to kind of stress about like stand up like right like, you know, because like I go and I work on new material and I might try the, the, you know, a new four minutes, like at three or four different venues. And then the next week I might try it again because I've refined it. I've took, take things out. I added more things. Um, now it's, it's tighter, but then the next time I go to this other place, I, I don't, you know, I used to worry like, Oh, I don't want to just keep doing the same thing and keep refining the same thing. I want to try to always come up with new stuff, but it's so hard. But now I'm starting to realize like, well, oh, man, I'm coming up with new stuff constantly. Now it's just like, how do I, you know, put that into this mix of this mm. of this bit and and what's going to make this stronger what can i take out and oh shit now i've got another five minutes you know what i mean so it's it's a constant like kind of growing and developing and pushing and it's the same thing with drawing and painting and music and i just think it's amazing um you know it's it's why i like to do this podcast is talking with other creative art, art artistic people about these kind of things because it's it's interesting how we work that way, you know, and how great, even in a time like this where everyone's freaking out and stressing and different things, um, I think we can find, you know, some kind of peace and balance mm. with, with, with the fact that we can create, yes. you know. And, and that's, that balance uh, is important within your job too. If you're um, only painting on yourself, you have a beautiful uh, working place and you're painting and you're listening to music you like, but if you're only um Isolated all the time, all day, or eighty percent of the day, there's something missing. Yeah, and and I found a, a, a very good balance in going out and doing those live gigs. So that's I'm I'm with people and I get uh, direct re re reactions, and sometimes they come to me afterwards say, "Ah, oh, that was good," or "You sucked in that one." And <laughs> it, for you, it's kind of the same with your uh, stand-up comedy. It's kind of a balance for your very very isolated uh, painting thing and then you go out and and it kind of uh, you, yes if you would only have to do one thing i think there would be something other some other thing missing because we exactly. love both, both of it yeah yes well i think also like if you you know that's where you can become obsessive you know i think <laughs> like what i was saying like when i was in my bands that was all that I was like, I was just like writing songs, recording them, you know, touring, you know, it was, that's just, it was, that's a, a huge commitment, you know? Yeah. Um, and so like, I think, you know, it, it can be that way where it's like, you're, you're focused just on the one thing all the time. And, um, but it, it, again, it, it changes though when, when, as soon as you start mixing in the fact that you, now you're going to be taking care of kids and stuff like that. So you got to like, got to balance everything, yeah. you know, it's interesting. You know, it's it's that uh, that art life, you know, but uh, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way, <laughs> you know. We're lucky guys. We I don't are. know any other way. <laughs> I would be in trouble. So uh, we've been talking for a little bit. I want there's some artwork I want to show you uh, that fans did, um, but I haven't done this for a little bit because uh, I just haven't since I haven't done this since the new year started. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again, the first time. Um, and I think 
that you might enjoy this. <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a little setup. The setup is this: is as as you know, uh, Joe Bloom is a, a good friend of yours, a good friend of mine. I love the guy like crazy, but he doesn't listen to my podcast. Doesn't ever listen to it. I know he doesn't. Um, he's that kind of guy. He, he could <laughs> no. give. He could give. You're two, in. He could give. You have two, a secret camera. He could give two flying fucks about my podcast. He doesn't. He doesn't care. But guess what? He's gonna listen to this one because he adores you. So I know that Joe's listening to this one. Ha <laughs> ha! Got you, Joe Bloom. Hi, Joe. So that's why I'm going to do Joe Bloom's favorite part of my podcast, which is serious questions with Jason Seiler. My serious question for Daniel Stieglitz is, do you have a secret message that you would like to deliver to Joe Bloom right <laughs> now that he's only going to, to be able to hear if he actually listens to this episode of this podcast? Is there a secret thing, something special, a story perhaps? This is my question for you. Do you have something like this? If I have something... Oh, uh, I don't have any secrets with Joe Bloom. We are so, uh, no, so a, open no, in our relationship. Message. I mean, a secret <laughs> best message to give him, or do you have some kind of fun a story or something about Joe Bloom? <laughs> fun story about Joe Bloom. Gotta be uh, something. You mean a story, a story he knows or we both know, or what, what do you mean? Something... Say something about Joe Bloom. <laughs> you know, what was very funny um, and very nice, when, when I went to Memphis, I visited him first. So I didn't flee to Memphis, but to Dallas. And then together with Mary and, and his beautiful lady, um, we had a road trip to Memphis. Yeah. And we were uh, playing disc jockeys. And everyone was allowed to choose one song. And be, but before uh, listening to the song, everyone told some kind of story why this song was important uh, to him or her, and and this was a real blast to really sit down, listen to the music, and have the the explanation before that, and knowing that there are two bottles of good whiskey in the back, and so we really really enjoyed that road trip. Is that a story? Yeah, but that's you had the whiskey while you're driving. <laughs> nah, only Joe drank while he was driving. But I, I stay sober uh, sitting in a car yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, that's great. See, there you go. And that was serious questions with Jason Seiler. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was really cool. All right, man. So, um. I'm going to show you some fan art. There's some fan art that was sent, and actually there was quite a bit, so I think you'll enjoy this. So I'm going to uh, – tell me if you see this. I'm going to switch over. Oh, you have to share your – You see that? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> um, hello from France. This is by Christophe uh, Messat. Messat? Wow, look at that. He spent some time. It's, it's some kind of um, cross hatching with a. Wow. It's like ballpoint pen, perhaps? Point pen, yes, ballpoint pen. Wow, yeah. I like it. It's a, um, instant uh, recognition or recognizability, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes. And some kind of evil grin. <laughs> 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 This is by uh, Franz T. Um, I'm, I think I think you guys might be friends on Facebook. Uh, he did this one really quick. He said, "But I think he got you pretty good there." Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, very, good. I, very good. I I love the forehead just shooting out from the hair the hairline. Yeah. There. It's nice. The um, the hair don't get any longer, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that's a real painting. This is by uh, Ray Shipman. I like that one. I like the uh, this earthy brown colors. They are my favorite colors. Yes, I <laughs> totally. And my uh, yellow teeth. Doesn't he ever brush <laughs> teeth? This guy. Are they that yellow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do I look like that? 
<laughs> no, it's brilliant. <laughs> and it's even more. But what's the what's the is there's the shadow on the forehead? It is, isn't it? Uh, I I am assuming that's that dark what it is. brown uh, stroke, or um, or it's bird poop. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great one. Um, this so this is uh these are three different versions. This is by uh, Joe uh, Bonfim Bonfim. Wow, look at that! The three brothers, the three uh, Goldfinch brothers. <laughs> I'm not I sure like what the, the, the squares are on the forehead, if that's like a reflection or something. I'm not <laughs> yes, sure what that it's is. It's the bowling ball reflection. You know the cartoon bowling ball? Uh, ah, yeah. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so this is by Dominic Zollinger. You know him, right? Ah, yes. Yeah, so, I know. Yes, I know this one. So he has – this is actually like a comic strip. So there's a few mm -hmm, of them in mm -hmm. a row. So, mm -hmm. so this is the first one, the Double Chin Chronicles. Mm -hmm. All right. Without Double Chin, please. <laughs> Look up there. flying. It's a flying Jason Seiler. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yes, on, yes, on. yes. And then – Without Excited. double chin. <laughs> How is his beard? Let me yeah. see the first picture again. Did, did he have a goatee? <laughs> yes, it's this goatee from the... <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Did you see my... Uh, yes, I, I did. I think a year ago, I did uh, a few comic strips, the, the Double Chin Chronicles, because yeah. I hear this... Um, the sentence a lot, please, without double chin. And uh, Dominic <laughs> at that time did his version too, but I didn't know that that episode. A flying siler. <laughs> I don't know. Very that good. Um, oh, that is cute. <laughs> Look at that. My hair has Easter bunny ears. Wow. <laughs> I love that. It's Easter bunny ears. Uh, that's by Walid Shihab. Shihab. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> it's uh, uh, by a, a guy. Was it a girl? Uh, that's a guy, Wally. Wow, yeah. very nice. So <laughs> cute. My my children are gonna love that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll email these to you. Ah, yes. Uh, you know, wow, very very good. <laughs> um, this is a funny one. This is. A... <laughs> 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 oh, who's that? It looks like a like you're gonna take a like an I'm like an apple or something. Yeah, I'm gonna take a bite out of you. Uh, this is this is by my favorite last name on the planet, Jacques Lemonnier. Ah, Jacques Lemonnier. Oh, wow. Well, this is very very funny. You know what I I'm totally into is storytelling. So yeah. I I love uh, good caricatures of heads, but what I really really um, enjoy so much is when there's some kind of story in it. Uh, this bunny thing and drawing with a carrot is so nice, and this is even more. It starts me uh, starts. Um, there are stories coming in my head. Why do I have your your <laughs> your head in my 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 hands? But it's so so good. This yeah ah oh, brain. It's a massage for your brain. Yes, I love that. A massage yeah. for your brain. That's nice. <laughs> Great um, one. This, this is by Lars Eric Robinson. Wow. Very good, too. Very good. Very good. And why is, why is there a dollar sign? Huh? Am I the one uh, earning that much money? No. A dollar? <laughs> a dollar sign? But that's his kind of storytelling. The, the rest is completely a caricature, and this is his... Um, his uh, yes point. Yeah, he's making a point. He's making a point. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, <laughs> this is by Jason Williams. Great. He's saying, oh, no, it's, it's the... Corona. <laughs> yes. It's the doctor saying, uh, Mr. Stiglitz, could you open your mouth, please? Let me check. Ah, uh, yes. And now say, ah. Uh... Great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's even better hearing you going ah. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, very very funny. Uh, oh, look at that. This is by Chris uh, Christopher Hersman. I love the the blurry glasses. That's kind of a cool touch. And yet, yes, in the mixture of this blurriness and then this um, details in the beard. So 
yeah works perfectly wow yes <laughs> love it love it it's pretty cool pretty pretty pretty, pretty cool uh there's another cool one <laughs> <laughs> this looks a bit like uh, there was this app where you can make uh, yourself look uh, like 20 years older or something like that. <laughs> Very good. I never, I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, this is yeah. by Nico's uh, Karath. Wow. But yeah, I like look I like the out of, out of focus feel. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yes, and it's so there's so many work in that, isn't it? Look oh, at yeah. that. It's a real, real, real painting <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man I'm, I'm very like amazed by those painters because I'm not into painting <laughs> I'm only into drawing and, and anytime I see a painting for me it's like wow yeah yeah <laughs> see that's how I feel when I when I see you just freehand all those cartoon caricatures it's awesome yeah um, all right this is by David Baxter <laughs> <laughs> oh yes it's a bit. Uh, this Stieglitz has drank uh, the whiskey already. <laughs> yeah, you, you oh. sort of look like a like a Veggie Tale or something. Like what? <laughs> like one of the Veggie Tales. Have you ever seen that show? That no, the kid, no, the kid cartoon. Know. Oh no. Uh, oh, I should look it up. You look like uh, uh, I can't even remember the name. Larry the Cucumber, I think. Oh, uh, I, I don't know that one. <laughs> but there's the same um, kind of um, shadow on my forehead again. The same yeah. as the other one had. Yeah. So there seems to be some kind of reference. Uh, it must be from shadow the, there. Yeah, yeah, it must be picture. Yeah. Or that's just a bird poop again, but it's just soft. <laughs> <laughs> the nice brown tones again. I like that. Yeah. Orange. Or you can say orange for Mr. Band. Orange. Band. Mr. Band. Um. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I get it. Ah, there was this uh, reference picture. That's why one someone put your face into it. I, I forget it what because the of that reference picture. Wow, ah, oh, very good. What's in the reference? You're holding up a. It's a sculpture of yourself. Yes, a sculpture from uh, from this guy. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I see. It okay. looked the same as this here. So this was ah, yes, yes, yes. Very good. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. This is by Michael Crotty. That's hilarious. Okay, now it makes sense. It's funny. Yeah, it is. Hilarious. Um, I got right, this, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Did, were you going to say something? No, it's... Uh, let me... I put it on my door. So it's uh, really... When you come into my, my office here, you can... Oh, uh, the, the sculpture? Yes, here it oh, is. We'll take a look at it after we're done. Okay, okay sorry. You can't see it. Right um, <laughs> wow, this is a nice drawing. This by... is by um, Irina Sergeva or Sergeva. And what is the ma master clip? Master. I'm not sure what's. Clip? Wow. But I like it. Master clip? It looks like, very, uh, like, like a very uh, small drawing. You can see the. I guess it's, it isn't that big. Very nice. That's very cool. Um, this this person did three versions of you. This is by Travis Usher. Wow. And which is the best? What would you say? Which is the best? I oh, would say the the center thing. This what what uh, feels for me feels uh, most like me, more like you. Wow. Man. Why do Man. the people uh, invest so much time in this? Wow. Well they, well, they love you, man. That's why. Okay, I have to love you back. I love you back. Yo. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Ich schaff das. Wait. Ich liebe dich auch. Wow. Very, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kratz and Kratz. Ich schaff so. das. You can do it. Um, th this is great. Oh, this, is, uh... this must be Salah. Yep, yep. Salah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> Bye, Corona. <laughs> now this is cool, man. I, I love how, um, you know how I just love the shapes of this, man. The, yes, yes. From the forehead down to the, the, you know, the teeth coming out at a slight angle. It's 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 all really nice. And I'm sure it's a digital drawing, but uh, Sala is so good in making digital stuff look uh, analog. 
Yeah. We are both fans of this. Um, I think it's a Spanish guy, Ser Sergio Topi. You know that? I don't Sergio, know. Sergio Topi. Ser he does Sergio, Sergio no. Topi, and he does those comic. Uh, yes, he does this uh, hatching, hatching, hatching thing. And we we talked uh, last year, uh, Salah and me, and uh, we we are both fans of him. And he this isn't the Sergio Topi style, but he can. Bah, uh, he can do that, pull that off too. So very, very, very good. And it's the, this energy he he yeah. puts into his things. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's a really nice energy to it. And it's this awesome. analog feel about it. Yeah, very I'm not good. Sure. Song. Great job. That's cool. Uh, and here's the last one. Uh, this is by AJ Jensen. I'm all <laughs> yeah, good AJ to is. go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, you can see it's AJ. He did. A, he had a very good uh, AJ. You had a very good ball this uh, last year at Iska, I think. He he told me that uh, it was the first time he did uh, bodies. Normally he's just into faces. Oh, okay. very good. It's awesome. Thank you very much. So it is the Corona, uh, the last toilet paper in Germany. I I <laughs> grabbed. How do you uh, how do you say I'm I'm all good to go in German? Well, what means I'm I'm all good to go means um, now now I'm ready to go or it means it uh, it, it means you know like you've got you've got your toilet paper I'm all set you know I'm good to go. Yes, it, in German it would I would say uh, ich habe alles was ich brauche. Mehr I brauchst du nicht. Mehr brauchst du nicht. I have a fuzzy brow. <laughs> <laughs> Mehr brauchst du nicht. <laughs> toilet paper. You, you don't. You don't need anything else. <laughs> ah, there's me again. All right, am I here? You see, that's there awesome. Is. There it is. Yeah. That makes more sense now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. Awesome. That's funny. That's hilarious. Wow! Thank you all. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I have to look it a bit more closer and in more in detail. Yeah, I'll email them to you. Yeah, and uh, I can look at them. So. Um, Hey, before we wrap this baby up, uh, uh, is there anything you want to share? Something new going on? Something you're working on? Or where can people find you? What's going on? Let's let people know how they can support you and and all that kind of good stuff. Follow you on Instagram and your website, whatever. Yes. Uh, as I now have some more uh, free time uh, due to corona i try to concentrate more on this um storytelling uh, dictating um novel writing thing that's why i'm not that active uh, in facebook and all those uh, caricature competitions i i can see that there's uh, much going on um tom richmond is pulling his daily Corona Couture thing. I would love to join. I don't There's, think I even saw that yet, but that's yeah, cool. Yeah. And many caricature artists pulling something off and, and showing their work. And so, but I try to concentrate now more on my, yes, my, my stories. So that's why you can't, I'm after this, what was it, Inktober or what? No, it, the January challenge. Uh, it was Caricature, no. Oh yeah, that was like resolution. one a day or something, right? Yes. Yeah. I did that in January, but afterwards yeah, I I I didn't show any more Instagram, so I'm pretty w uh, weak there right now. So I think you won't see that much of me in the next weeks because I as I said, I tried to concentrate in uh, in getting my ideas out of the the to-do list. I want to I have so many ideas. I can share some of, uh, of those ideas. Maybe you will read those uh, novels. I have, for example, the idea of, um, let's, let me see which one I'm going to share with you. Uh, it's a crime story, a classic uh, crime story uh, about, um, a, how do you say, a police officer that has, has some kind of a really, really, really hard, uh, bloody case. And he's um, going off to Brazil. I'm not sure. He's uh, quitting, and he's and he has a twin brother who lives on the street, and uh, he keeps it as a secret because he is a police officer, and he doesn't want everyone to know that his uh, twin brother is, and the twin brothers is uh, hours away in another city, so they 
nearly never meet. Maybe they talk because the twin brother needs uh, some more money. And it's the case again. The twin brother tries to get money. And uh, when he comes to his brother, uh, the flat is empty because the brother left to Brazil or somewhere. And he just wrote a letter, the brother. The, the police officer. So no one knows yet that he quits. So the this uh, alcohol uh, street living uh, guy who has no clue about police work instead of uh, all those TV shows, he's taking the role of his brother. You know, he... Be, because he's just just driven into it. There's someone knocking and saying, "Open the door! Come on! Come on! Let me talk to you." And he's like, um, "I uh, uh." so." And that's when the case starts. And oh. and I'm so looking forward in uh, writing uh, or let's say dictate uh, this. It's some kind of fun, but it's very bloody. And they, he has to solve a really um, yes, a dark thriller case. And his approach is. Very, as you can imagine, very unconverge conventional, conventional, unconventional, unconventional. Yes, because he he just doesn't care, and but he has a good uh, he he has a good smell of things. You say that in English, you know he he's a good sense of things. A sense. There you go. <laughs> my English is so bad. Uh, it's way better than my German. So we're, you're doing. And at awesome. the end, he he uh, finishes this case. And in the end, the brother in Brazil uh, hears in the news that he solved a case. And then he sees the picture of his brother. And that's the first um, the first book. They're going to be, I would say, 10 books. And it's going to be huge. And they're going to be <laughs> movies. And you know who is going to play this character? Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr.? Yes, my guy. I, uh, I have no... Too big. Yet. Too big. Yes. Um, yeah, Larry David. I'm working on that right now. <laughs> but I've, I've given everything away already, and someone is going to steal my idea. No. Oh, no. 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 We'll, we'll straight we out. It's copyrighted. It's copyrighted. We've fixed it right now. We've fixed it here on yes. YouTube. It's, there's proof. There's proof here. Um, I have a question for people that might be interested Um before we uh, end this, what kind of pens uh, and paper do you recommend? Like, what kind of stuff do you, is, do you prefer to use? Um, oh, yeah, I want to try. Let me pick that up. You might want to try to be Stieglitz for a little bit. So this is my favorite paper here. Color copy. Okay. I'm not sure if it's available in uh, the States. And it's uh, I used 160 gram because uh, I don't want to carry that much. Some colleagues use 250 gram. I like this most. And my favorite pencils. I, I Most of the time I use only one pencil. It's my magic from Pentel, where is it? It's this one. There's a black, normally it's black. Do I have a black version here? So many of them, but where is the black version? So it's a, a brush pen. Ah, nice. Um, and it has the brush tip. It's from Pentel. I'm, I'm, I think it's the most common brush pen. Oh, okay. And so you're, are you able, you're able to do like really thin lines and thick lines with the yes. same pen? Oh, cool. Without uh, so quick, 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 being quick, quick, quick. And the other pen I like to use for the shades is it's from Pentel Two, and it's the this um, well. water brush thing. Ah. And so, I use some drops of ink together with the draw uh, with the water. You can actually use this ink if you put this the the cartridge and squeeze it or you use some other I want to get one of those I, I keep seeing Jan use use those when he does like watercolor sketches yeah. and that looks like a lot of fun it's awesome yeah it is you just have to squeeze and it's always wet and you don't have to so what's cool this. about that is you can just by how much ink you put in that you can yeah. do like darker shades lighter shades yes. 
That's I awesome. used to have uh, two two grays or three grays in live gigs, but I I reduced it to one gray again because it's all about uh, quantity, quantity, and quick, quick, quick. But if you have more gray tones, it's obviously get more, getting more depth and more yes, three dimensionality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so those are my favorite uh, pens. That's awesome. All right, man. Well, you know what? I've had a blast this morning talking to you. And without any alcohol, Jason. It's too early, man. It's like 10 in the morning for here. What time is it there? It's 3 o'clock now, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So next time we pick another uh, time and then we add some whiskey tasting with it. Yeah, we'll do some whiskey tasting. That'll be fun. Or red wine tasting. You do the red wine tasting. You're more more the red wine guy and I'm more the whiskey guy. I like whiskey, though. Just depends. Yes. Yeah, I like whiskey. I I only drink uh, things that start with W. Wine, <laughs> wine, whiskey, water. Woka cola. Yeah, Woka cola. No, I don't drink soda. Don't do it. Um, but man, this has been a real pleasure. It's been really good. Uh, I have I have a question. Catching up with you. Oh yeah, go ahead. Now now that uh, I have a, a real American guy sitting in front of me, who is gonna be the next president? Oh, we're gonna go there. Um. Oh, I love my, Bernie Sanders, but you, he's not going to make it. Don't do you want my true? Uh, yeah, what I feel. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like Bernie Sanders, but I don't think he's got a chance uh, because the DNC uh, is going to stab him in the back like they did last time. I think they already have, and I he's think by left. Yeah, he's he's it, 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 yeah, but I think the DNC kind of already makes up their mind, and so I think it's going to be Biden. And if I'm being honest about different things, I feel. Uh, Trump's going to be president again because I don't see burn. I don't see. I don't see Biden beating him. I know. That's just what I'm feeling. That's the feeling I get. Because here's why I think that uh, the Democratic Party is stupid. I think they keep making terrible decisions. This whole Democratic uh, debate thing that's been going on for the last month or so has been so childish and so just all over the place. Um, I think it's been embarrassing. And I, I don't really see anybody that's like that great. And uh, but I think it's going to be Biden. And so we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't want Trump to win. I don't want Trump to win. I don't want I don't want him to win. Sha la 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 la. He doesn't want Trump. Trump to win. La 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 la. Doesn't want Trump. Trump to win. La 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 la. Doesn't want Trump. Trump to win. Oh oh. La 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 la. la. But that's just the way la, la, it's gonna la, be. La, la, okay. I'm la, sorry. La, 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 la. Your guitar Fuck. playing is fantastic. It's fantastic guitar playing. But I'm sorry. I'm gonna be here for a little bit. Okay. Okay. Maybe Corona will help. Maybe yeah. it's gonna fuck it up someplace. We'll see. Hopefully. But here, here's Hopefully. another thing. Here's another thing that could be a possibility. Um, I have a feeling Elizabeth Warren is gonna be running as his vice president. Uh, that could help Biden. I think. Okay. Um, and Biden is is an old fart, man. Maybe wow. he doesn't live that long, and she becomes the first woman president of the United States. I'm just saying that could be a possibility. I'm not saying I hope Biden keeping dies. That in mind. Just saying, I'm keeping that he's in mind. Old. He's very old. Why do we keep having these old, old, old people yeah. in their seventies? They should. I don't. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I. Like it's funny because I I am not a Trump fan, and I've noticed any time I share my honest feeling about what's going on, and I say I think Trump's going to be president again. People are like, "What do you like Trump or something?" I'm like, "No, do you pay attention to the news? Do you watch what's happening?" It's like it's just frustrating. It's very frustrating. It seems like um, a bunch of crazy people that are basically in charge. You know. <laughs> Okay. So we we've talked about a lot of in Corona. We started yeah. with Corona and we we end with politics. Gosh, gotta gotta. Uh, it's gotta be something something. Um, how about this? Next time it's it only gonna be girls and whiskey. Girls and whiskey. <laughs> well, that sounds like a plan. Okay, high ready? five. High five.
Sixers. Truth.